Yeah, man, New York is, uh, it's, uh, it's safe. Uh, that being said, I got mugged <laughs> for the first time, and it happened here in this city. I'll paint a picture for you. I got mugged in broad daylight. Do you know what that does to a man's self-esteem? <laughs> yeah, every time I look in the mirror, I'm like, this is the weakest gazelle in the herd. <laughs> Like, they didn't even wait until dusk. It was just like 100% clear visibility in HD, like a David Attenborough documentary. And there we see the weakest wildebeest. Which, are you guys talking about me? Get him! <laughs> so, I'm walking down the street and I've got a three-piece suit on. I'm coming from a modeling gig. You gotta use what God gave you. We're all blessed with something. So I got my modeling gig, I came from it, I'm on my phone, I'm just talking, humble bragging, straight up bragging, just seizing the day, and out of nowhere these four kids appear. And I did, I said children, and I can prove it. Like one of them had shoes that blink. <laughs> Another one was on a Razor scooter. So my spidey sense was not tingling when I saw the cast from the Sandlot. And with my rose-colored glasses on, I heard them say, hey, we need to see your phone. And I thought, oh, hey, Dios mio, somebody needs to call their mom. Okay, well, what's going on? And they're like, no, give us your phone. And I look down, and in their cute little hands are pipes. So I go into NPR mode, and I was like, well, do you think that there's a way that we can resolve this conflict without reallocating resources in a way that is inequitable? And ah, this kid just hits me in the head with a pipe. Ooh. But check it out, don't worry. I've taken boxing lessons. <laughs> Two of them. And what they teach you in boxing is that when a tween hits you in the head with a pipe, <laughs> run. <laughs> no, I get to the corner, I look back, they're kick pushing in the opposite direction. And I'm like, full of adrenaline. I don't feel anything, I'm shaking. I'm like, <laughs> I made it, I made it, I'm alive. And I hear, we are the champions in my head. And I look down and in my hand is my Blackberry Pearl, you know, because <laughs> I almost died for the grape nuts of smartphones. <laughs> just like no apps at all. Just <laughs> and, and you know, I feel my neck is wet. And I start, I look down and I'm just streaming bright red blood down this side of my body. It looks like that scene in, uh, in the Scarface when he's in the bathtub with the chainsaws, just like, ah, just bright red, terrible. And then this side of me is still very sexy though, three-piece suit. <laughs> and I see a woman and she's walking her Sharpay, one of those little wrinkly cute like dogs that looks like a little flaccid penis. Like, ah. And she's walking her dog and she must have seen the three-piece suit side because she's vibing. You know, she's like, what up daddy? And everything is cool until I pulled the Two-Face Harvey Dent. And then I was like, ah, call 911! And uh, she, they take me to Woodhall Hospital. And uh, I put that in air quotes. If you're from Brooklyn, Woodhall is a general hospital. It's more like a mash unit underneath the JMZ train. I'm not gonna say it's ghetto, but you can still get Lucy's in the ER. <laughs> So I come in on a gurney and these like four Brooklyn cops s circle me and they're like, hey, oh, look at this guy. What happened? You, you beat somebody up at prom? What, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you think you can describe the, uh, the suspects? And I was like, I don't know, between nine and 13. <laughs> And they're like, wow, yo, boys, check this out. This guy fought like nine to 13 people. He's like a warrior. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's just like fighting a whole gang off by himself. What, do you take boxing lessons? And I was like, oh, they were between the ages of nine and 13. <laughs> Closes his book. So like, I don't know what to tell you, bro. <laughs> just stay out of the young adult book section. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Least popular guy in that ER after that. <laughs>